Boom. Uh, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. Very excited to be talking about global politics in 2019. Everything from deep fakes to autonomous lethal weaponry to all different types of exponential technology and peace or bust. We got to figure this out. And that's why we're doing a show on it. We're going to break down a bunch of these points and as well as the nuance around them. So let's jump into it. So I got a bunch of notes to share with you all as we go. So we got to start off with exponential technology and what this means as we move into the 2019 era of global politics. So there's a ton of insanity that we're facing with this. As you know, the law of accelerating returns is impacting every single industry. And there's a big, huge insanity happening, and it's been happening now with deep fakes. So there's already tons of work being done on deep fakes. We can see people from around the world that weren't actually saying what they were saying, but being portrayed saying it. It's being used in a ton of different malevolent um, situations. And I'm actually going to go ahead and walk us through some of the terrifying possibilities that exist here. Fake videos could feature public officials taking bribes, uttering racial epithets, or engaging in adultery. Politicians and other government officials could appear in locations where they were not, saying or doing horrific things that they did not. Fake videos could place them in meetings with spies or criminals, launching public outrage, criminal investigations, or both. Soldiers could be shown murdering innocent civilians in a war zone, precipitating waves of violence and even strategic harms to a war effort. A deep fake might falsely depict a white police officer shooting an unarmed black man while shouting racial epithets. A fake audio clip might reveal criminal behavior by a candidate on the eve of an election. A fake video might portray an Israeli official doing something or saying something inflammatory as to cause riots in neighboring countries, potentially disrupting diplomatic ties or even motivating a wave of violence. False audio might convincingly depict U.S. officials privately admitting a plan to commit this or that outrage overseas ex exquisite is it to lead time to disrupt an important diplomatic initiative? A fake video might depict emergency officials announcing an impeding missile strike on Los Angeles and an emergent pandemic in New York provoking panic or worse. We got to remember, look at all of these scenarios. This is nuts, all of these scenarios. Fake videos, fake audio, um, fake adultery, fake diplomacy, fake rioting, um, causing rioting through deep fakes. Um, when you can't distinguishably tell the difference between what's real and what's fake, our whole entire internet propaganda and cyber war uh, efforts, we really need to do to eradicate as much malevolence as possible as soon as possible so we can really grow from a heart-centric place, from a unity place. And we got to be teaching children this, otherwise we are going to have some serious issues. And this also includes things like people putting their faces in touch into porn videos where they're not actually there and putting those on the internet. This includes all different types of behaviors like this. And this is nuts. And this is this could stir up crazy riots around the world and um, and just catalyze some crazy, oh, that's fake. That's a deep fake. This is a deep fake. Well, how are we going to know the truth? This is a hugely pressing issue that we got to really think about solutions to and there's interesting technologies in place like we got to really see what we can do with encryption technologies with blockchain technologies to show proof proof and trust and we have to grow from the heart as well that's the best solution um, to not have any of this malevolence as soon as possible so deep fakes are are just nuts um Okay, as well as, of course, this one, which is crazy, autonomous war drones and robots. We've all now seen um, Boston Dynamics robots doing backflips. Um, we've seen, just imagine, you know, an assault rifle with that Boston Dynamics robot. Imagine the assault rifle and then imagine computer vision software just parsing and looking at people, finding the ones that are malevolent, use, looking at them with data fusion analysis to tell where they're at, what they're doing, what their psychometric states are and their biological states, et cetera. This is nuts. And um, this is also part, you know, part of that is seeing this type of, of site, you know, autonomousweapons.org, highly recommend coming here um, to their proposal to ban lethal autonomous weapons is, is so crucial. Um, you can share the video. I'm going to show you a little piece 
of the video called Slaughterbots on YouTube here right now. So, you know, look at this, this drone. He's tossing this drone out. He's pitching this drone. The drone has this facial recognition software and boom, it just goes right into the, into the head of the target and kills them just like that. Look at how easy it is for us to just completely kill. We can drop tens of thousands of these into areas where there's malevolent people, etc. Well, how about we grow better from the heart so that we don't have to have these types of issues. But this is really important, though, that we're highlighting this because we really have to grow together as a civilization and support a ban on lethal autonomous weapons, support heart centric thinking, teach kids about this, because this is a serious foresight. This is not fear mongering. This is foresight. This is very similar to doing things like saying that, oh my gosh, too many people are, are dying from fire. We need to have fire extinguishers. Where too many people are dying from automobile accidents. We need to have seat belts in automobiles. We need to have traffic lights, right? This is um, very similar, right? We need to grow. We need to learn. There's a, there's a threshold where learning from mistakes is no longer wise. We can't have mistakes with things like these um, autonomous lethal robots and drones. We have to be very careful as we approach this exponential technology age. And efforts like um, the Future of Life Institute are doing a really good job here. I'm going to pull them up here in a moment, um, and I'm going to share that with you because that's part of the autonomous war drones and robots. And as, as we get there, because that's more on the handling nukes and AGI as well side, there's a huge push happening with cyber war right now. And, and we have... <laughs> We have, we have close friends that are working in teaching and disseminating how crazy the geopolitical IP theft scene is, cyber war scene is, um, internet propaganda scene is, and we highly recommend going and checking them out as well. That is, um, go to inventip dot com i n v n t i p dot com and then when you go to general info regarding ip conflict you can see at this top bar you can see these latest articles that they have and these latest articles are nuts i mean look at this u.s charges hackers traders with stealing sec filings um, huawei unveils cutting edge big data chip as china pushes in 2018 um, trump tightrope trade walk war of worlds between mike pence xi jinping china calls for multilateralism free trade system with eu nsa leader creates task force to fight russian cyber attacks so going and just looking here at these latest articles can give you such an edge in understanding the sheer complexity of what's happening in cyber war and a sheer and the sheer complexity of what's happening geopolitically to be awakened and to be enlightened to some of the true malevolence that actually occurs and realizing that fully that it can't that it's not just tomorrow we can flick on peace love and understanding because some people have malevolent efforts they've grown up in areas that have that have and us has some of these areas too that has that has caused people to be more uh, malevolent malevolent due to their environmental stimuli and whatnot so it's up to us to really pass along this this trajectory of over time becoming more heart-centric and working on ourselves and teaching kids this and having geopolitical flourishing but right now there's it's insanity on a, on a crazy geopolitical level with cyber war and whatnot and so we have to really figure out how to come up with solutions to all these issues and these need to be at the front and center of of, of, of a majority of what we are doing in order for us to best be able to flourish. Okay, I'm going to show you a bit on um, the Future of Life Institute as well. The um, Future of Life Institute is, is really important as well. They have the 23 similar AI principles are very interesting and important to go check out. Um, they're working on you know artificial intelligence, safety and security research, as well as um, denuclearization. So there's you know over 10,000 of these nuclear weapons still on the planet, and we had almost two instances of mutually assured destruction in the Cold War that were just barely prevented um, by Vasily Arkhipov and Stanislav Petrov. Thank goodness that they did that and there's a bunch of ways that we can denuclearize and work with AI safety and security and 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 really come up with the right solutions that we need here and and um, preventing things like bio warfare or neuro warfare and that's a lot of what some of these podcasts some of these articles some of these grants that future of life Institute is working on highly recommend um, checking them out as well Okay, so that's a bunch of that's a bunch of general idea on what we're facing with the sheer complexity geopolitically of exponential technology, and this is the first and foremost crucial point that we have to remember as we move forward and be teaching other young people about this around the world and having more conversations about it. Okay, moving on to point number two. Point number two, 
No more monkey politics. All right. This is super important. We are, this is no longer this sort of greedy, corrupt, selfish sort of incumbent systems aren't going to work anymore. There are really strong principles of democracy that we need to take and we need to upgrade some of the code to democracy 2.0, to capitalism 2.0, to maximizing the flourishing of all people 2.0. We have to figure out how to do that. And we have to have more scientists, engineers, designers, artists, critical thinkers involved in updating our democracy. That the need for these sort of heart-centric unity thinking um, humans is so crucial to be in these roles of leadership. Scientists and engineers and entrepreneurs are in many ways at the forefront of the cutting edge of knowledge and they need to work with politicians as well and governments to be able to deal with these pressing issues. Building trust across borders is so crucial. We've, we're seeing, I'm going to get into that in the next portion. We'll get there. And eradicating these parasitic behaviors. We got to work on building out meditative practices, psychedelic practices, what we need to to realize really truly how to best move forward collectively. And this is, you know, this is a really good example of like, like, have you guys seen this before? This is the Venus Project. Venus Project is a very interesting project. They're, they're like, why is civilization not shaped like this? And it's a great question because I, I know so little about what exactly is possible with civilization that what is going on here in this image? Are we talking like some sort of, of, of protopia, like slowly, a slow incremental progress to a very prom- progressive state of flourishing? Because I don't know how do people live there? What do they have access to? Are there, you know, robots and AI doing a lot of things? Um, how do, how do you, how do people have some sort of a incentivized in a style of innovation, etc.? But it looks gorgeous and it looks completely sustainable and, um, and eco-driven and eco-friendly and, and, and still highly innovative and technological and whatnot. So these are like, why is civilization in the metropolis is shaped the way that it is? And why do we still have so much dirt and grime and garbage and in uh, many position, many people that are positioned in, uh, in ways that they don't want to be positioned in extremely poor poverty, disease ridden statuses that want better opportunities. How can we fix these issues? Venus project is like, yo, check this out. We can, we can have a different style of civilization. So this is really important to keep in mind that we are not locked into where we're at, that we have a lot of space to grow and envision these types of civilizations and go and try these out and aim funding towards them to build these out and to um, explore them and to, but there's a huge push into metropolis. So you have the network effect like people have to be moving there by the droves of high influence to get more people to move there it's some very crazy like macroeconomic and network theory things that actually um, go into that okay and this as well so um, many people um, know Rucker is very interesting he was just a historian he was just at um, Davos and when he was there, he basically said that why is it that these 3,000 plus uh, extremely wealthy global leaders are having all these panels, but only one or two of them are actually on wealth inequality? Because there's been a severe concentration of wealth, and we're all very aware of this, um, but the solutions aren't obvious. And But one of the things he says is, yo, like, stop talking about philanthropy and start talking about tax evasion. Because, uh, But hold on a second. Even though that is an interesting idea, which it is, of course, is actually paying your fair share of taxes on the extraction, on the extractive economy that's actually going on. And when you're doing that and you're extracting wealth from people of of lower and middle SES, you you become more and more responsible to not just fuel that money into a fifth yacht or a fifth house, but you become responsible to do things like innovate yourself. If you're not going to pay taxes, if you're going to choose to not give the government the ability to do things like somehow incentivize further innovation through their programs and whatnot, that you need to incentivize the innovation. And so this is where the balance between extreme taxation, like extremely high marginal tax rates, 70, 80, 90% versus 
if you're going to go pursue you donating the giving pledge, if you're going to give 90% of your wealth away as a billionaire, then you got to do it right away in the most effective ways possible, hiring thousands of people to tackle some of society's biggest challenges and things like that. How do we further propagate that sort of a mentality? And how do we figure out what's the best between high marginal taxes and giving governments and letting them distribute it or having these extreme like think tanks and innovation tanks through things like the giving pledge be really resourceful? because we would much rather um, see the most uh, beneficial possible options. So that's um, make sure that this money is being wisely spent is a huge, huge key here. People need dignity. They need something to wake up every morning passionate about. So again, a lot of people are throwing around these these extremely um, like kindergarten ideologies of like, you know, universal basic income. Great. There's nuance here. We can explore things like this, but you have to realize that somehow people still need to find meaning meaning and dignity in their life every single day when they wake up. We have to realize that and figure out what is the best way to test these hypotheses and go out and, and, and do the ones that make the most sense that are actually being tested in the best ways. And um, again, this is highly nuanced to figure this out, but no more monkey politics, putting the right uh, scientists and think tanks together to actually um, develop further plans for geopolitical flourishing is so crucial in 2019. All right, on we go. This is going to be extremely crazy. Um, this section is nuts. i um, finding out the truth because here we are, we find ourselves after a long period of evolution as stewards of earth. And as we find ourselves as stewards of earth after this long period of evolution, we have North America, we have South America, we have Africa, we have the Middle East, we have Europe, we have Asia, and we have Indonesia, and we have Australia, and then no one lives in Antarctica. So this is just very, an interesting blue marble an interesting blue and green marble, and we have no idea how to, how to be effective at flourishing yet. We, are, we have discovered electricity and internet and food and water ubiquity, and these things are good, and they work, but we need them and more done more effectively, and <laughs> we have to have global discourse about how to do this better, because right now we're lacking that global discourse. Isn't it nuts that we have this plat these platforms, these major video distribution platforms and, and social media distribution platforms, yet why are they not sponsoring themselves the most thought-provoking debates, geopolitical debate series out there? Why don't we have a World Cup of ideas where, where a man and a woman from every single country around the world participate in debates around how to maximize human potential? Why are these not happening? These need to be happening. And they, it's, they can be sponsored by these largest technology companies around the world in the US and in China, especially with so much money and so many users using their platforms. So we challenge you, the biggest technology companies, pursue things like this because we are, we're going to do it and you are too with us. We're going to all do this together. Oh man, look at this thing. So now there's so many different countries. What do these countries want? How do we figure out the truth? What does the United States want? The United States gained its independence and now we find ourselves after 1776, we find ourselves with the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and all these great things and we have this code that needs to still be updated, but what is the United States going to do? What does the United States truly want? It's a massive military budget, massive GDP, and what is it trying to do around the world? The same exact question can be asked of China. China is number two now in the world in GDP and China is making a tr tremendous amount of um, like intellectual advancements. And what does China want? The China is doing the Belt Road Initiative. China's, the China's Belt Road Initiative is pushing all across the Eastern Hemisphere. And are they trying to you know, help with the flourishing of the economies over there? Or are they um, simultaneously trying to give deals to these countries that are completely in China's favor at the same time? And is that the best way to do business? Um, some countries say, yeah, come on. And some countries say, no, 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 these are horrible deals. So you know, what is going on there with China and the Eastern Hemisphere? What's going on with the United States and the Western Hemisphere? The United States 
becoming more energy independent now with shale oil and not needing necessarily to be relying on the Middle East reserves of oil. You know, what is that going to be doing? Why are there these nationalistic efforts now in the United States? Um, and in with the with the United Kingdom leaving with Brexit, what is going on? Why are these things happening? Can there be more nuance? Can we figure out how to have more of a global mentality while simultaneously also realizing that we need a tr- to increase the amount of trust and we need to. Um, be able to handle things like these exponential technologies at the same time. How do we properly move forward? How do we have this global geopolitical discourse in 2019? All right. So again, what do these different places in the world truly want? What does Russia want? What does the Middle East want? What does Africa want? What does Europe want? And what exactly has been happening in the United States side of things? What has been going on in the last three years? This has been freaking crazy. Why is Manafort, Cohen, Flynn, and so many others, why are they pleading guilty and some of them are going to jail? Isn't this all freaking crazy? Comey being fired, Clinton's private email server, DNC email hacking, Mueller special counsel investigation, dozens of indictments and still roaring, um, Trump's personal organization, what's going on there with the nuance of him being president and him also having a massive uh, conglomerate across the world of resorts and hotels and all this other kind of stuff. You know, really, truly, what, how has this been happening for three years? And what is the actual truth? Why have we not found the truth yet in the most, we're now three years. This is crazy that all of these things are are happening in the, in the United States and exponential technology is making this stuff even crazier with deep fakes and internet propagandists and cyber warfare, we have to really be careful moving forward. And we have to really be truthful, heart centric, we got to do this this way. Um, all right, let's move on to the to the next section. You know, we were talking a bit about what's going on with France, the social issues, what's going on with German and Italian economies. How about Switzerland and the rest? What are you, with the rest of the roles of European countries? What do they want? What does Japan, South Korea, North Korea want? The Middle East in many ways is building the future, but social equality is behind in many ways. Africa coming up, unleashing their creativity, but there's a major land grab going on at the same time, like the old scramble for Africa. This is secretly happening right now with land for Africa competing to who's going to provide these next 1 billion Africans that are being born into the world because their population pyramids are all super low. They're super triangular. The the youth is about to, to blow up and who's going to be providing them with their basic needs. What's going on in Venezuela? What is going on with indigenous people around the world, like the Native Americans in the U.S.? What the f- did the U.S. do? Like, why are why are we not big more? tentative to what's happening with the Native American population and who's taking care of them? Who's taking care of the indigenous populations in the Amazonian area? Because that's similar thing. People are trying to live there peacefully, but economies are pushing in and affecting them as well. And why are we pushing into people's lives that are trying to live peacefully on the land? And don't even get me started on the Rohingya genocide and the Rohingya displacement that's happening. Um, Whatever is going on there is fucking crazy. Look not only at this, these shanty towns and refugee camps that have been set up that are fucking crazy, but look at this. Look at stuff like this. There's moms and they're holding their daughters that are that are starving and, and that have been fled from their homes. Same thing with fathers and brothers here, you know, again, just barely getting the necessary nutrients that they need that are, this is, this is absolutely crazy. And it's so difficult to actually find the truth. Again, we want to find the truth. What happened in Myanmar with the Rohingya people? They're militants and, and fighting back this way, that way. What is the truth? And how can we stop these types of insane crises from occurring around the world where two million of them have been displaced now over a period of several years? This is insane. And we can't, we can no longer be so ignorant and not find the truth in these matters. And it's also crazy because this, the cycle of news, and we're going we're gonna to touch on this in a moment, is just moving so dang fast that we're not actually able to keep up with the cycle. Here, let's, 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 jump, let's jump into that. 
So the, in this section, this is Occam's razor versus conspiracies. I think this is a very interesting section for 2019's global politics because Occam's razor says simpler solutions are likely to be correct than the complex ones. Very true, very true, very true. It's much more easy to think that, and it's very true. Not only is it cognitive easing, and it's and it's also um, it's also just it's also just you know true. We've tested that the molecular composition of water is a certain way, and you know we're so 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 certain of that on a par probability distribution. So likely that is correct now, and uh, it's not likely that there's some massive global conspiracy around the molecular composition of water, right? Okay, but how about things like because our new new cycle is moving so fast, and we talked about this several times, not only with the Rohingyans and what's going on there, but also with things like the 2016 election in the United States. Also things like that's only three years old and we are still in 2019 again trying to figure out what actually happened there holy crap we still haven't gotten to the truth after three years what about things like 9-11 what about programs like mk ultra what about all of the other insane conspiracies that have been happening over the last couple of decades that we haven't actually gotten to the truth about why are we still here today after 15, 25, 35 years after these incidents and we don't have the truth yet? We have to be more, we have to be better at identifying the 1%. We have to maximize the success of people that have this Copernicus mindset, this Galilean mindset, this idea that we know that the earth is not the center of the universe. The earth just orbits around the star, that we need more hubris. We need more hubris. This has happened over and over and over again in civilization. And the more humility that we have, the, we, we, the hubris is extremely overwhelming. It's, it's, the, the hubris runs rampantly. We're overly self-confident. We're not humble enough. We need to be more humble. And as we stay more humble and we can uplift the 1% thinkers, again, be very careful with this. We mentioned this here. The 1% Thinkers can also be very dangerous at times because the 1% thinkers, like again, if someone's trying to argue the molecular composition of water, if someone's trying to argue gravity is not 9.8 meters per second squared pulling down, if someone's trying to argue that, we have to be really careful because, you know, the, the probability that they're right is now very wrong, is very low. So we have to be careful with that. What is true? But... At the same time, there's people that are arguing 1% mindsets of things like potentially um, uh, the 2016 election or 9-11 or MKUltra or Rohingyans, what's going on in Rohingya, what's going on between Palestine and Israel, what's going on between Armenia and Azerbaijan, what's going on in China um, and um, um, what's going on between North and South Korea, what's going on in all these different places in the world where this is all happening. How do we get to these unknowns faster and get them written in the... Uh, history books correctly now is more crucial than ever. So we have to do that. We have to figure out how to uplift the 1% and test these hypotheses best is, the, is a good way to put it. All right. And on to the last one. Very simple. Slow down and think. Breathe and be grateful for life. Be grateful that we're all born here on earth and we've had this just absolute pleasure of being able to be birthed into all of this ubiquity and so much, but there's so much pressure on us too to be able to figure out how 7.8 billion of us can work together in this exponential technology age. Slowing down and thinking is so important that this whole notion of we have to race, we have to race for the first to have artificial general intelligence, for the first to have the best genetic engineering technologies, the first to have all this transhumanism technology. We haven't ethically matured out of kindergarten yet. We have to mature out of kindergarten, develop our hearts, develop our meditation, our unity senses, build trust across borders deal with these ethical quandaries that we have in exponential technologies and autonomous weaponry and slow down and think, breathe, be grateful. This is ours. This is sacred. We got this. And increasing the baseline of freedom, the economic degrees of freedom around the world to unleash the fullest creativity of as many people as possible. So crucial. All right, let's do a quick review of all of our points, everyone. Again, global politics in 2019 is absolutely crazy. And 
we're approaching the exponential technology age. We have to be very careful with deep fakes, autonomous war drones and robots. Again, what are we going to do about all of the cyber war, the IP theft, the psychometric profile, internet propaganda? Talk to people around you. Have these conversations. How are we going to handle the nukes, the AGI? How can we wrap people's minds around these complex geopolitical scenarios and get them more, have them, give them more time to go and research these things and explore these things? And again, go and check out the links to the X tech, the X tech, um, learn about deep fakes, learn about banning lethal autonomous weapons, autonomousweapons.org, future of life institutes, future of life.org, and then invent IP, I N V N T I P.com. Go and look at these, everyone go and start talking about these more often. Okay. Exponential technology. How are we going to deal with that? No more monkey politics, having more heart centricity, having more scientists, designers, and engineers updating democracy 2.0, capitalism 2.0, spirituality 2.0. Let's get there together. Have the billionaires and the wealthy class be the ones to develop their hearts out while the, we'll meet them together in the middle that from the lowest of SES will push up and from the top, we'll have them help push everyone up as well. But we have to develop our hearts. We have to get there together. And people need dignity. They need something to be passionate about. No more monkey politics. It's time for that advanced spiritual politics. Finding out the truth, the sheer complexity of all of the countries around the world and what do these countries want? How can these countries work together? Especially being the bridge between the United States and China, which is something that I care about so much. I want to be the, a huge bridge between the U.S. and China. I want to be a huge bridge between Hollywood and Silicon Valley. We need to disseminate really powerful unity media between these countries and between these areas in California as well. And really understand some of the complexity and the deepest scale about what's going on across these different countries in the world and how to prevent more of these refugee crises that we're seeing. Occam's razor and conspiracies, figure out how to help that 1% um, with the right hypothesis testing to see if they're actually right and how can we get to these truths the fastest. Slow down, think, breathe be grateful and increase the baseline for everyone in 2019. I love you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. This has been, this has been such an honor and such a pleasure to be able to, to work with you guys. Uh, again, look at, look at this. This is, this is crazy beautiful. We have the potential to be able to get to this point and even more. We have the potential to become an interplanetary species. We have the potential to eradicate as much suffering as possible and maximize the degrees of freedom for as many people on the planet as possible. We have the resources on earth to be able to do this. They're just not distributed well enough yet. And we also have to develop our hearts through practices like meditation and mindfulness and psychedelic use. We can do this together it's up to us. Let's do it together, everyone. Really think about this pressing state of the geopolitical concerns that we're facing in 2019 because it is going to be a crazy year. And again, it's up to us to have these conversations. Have these conversations with your friends. Have them with your families. Have them with your coworkers. Have them with people in your communities at the deepest levels possible. Teach them to your kids. Teach your kids and people around you to be more vigilant about the way that they consume media because of the deep fake era. And remember all these tough conversations, have them understand our uh, global political sphere better and get ready for 2019. Buckle up, critically think, and let's have more nuanced political discourse and share that around the world and think globally, act locally, and go make change. Let's do it. Let's build the future together. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. Give us your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Join the community on simulation. We'd love to to start building out this global community and making these actionable steps. All the links are below to that. Support the local entrepreneurs and artists that you believe in, the scientists that you believe in, everyone. Go and support them. Support them. That's so, so crucial for their development and growth. Support simulation as well if you believe in us. All that info is below, helping us scale and whatnot. Again, build the future, everyone. We love you so much. Manifest your destiny into the world. We will see you soon. Keep having these nuanced discourses and thinking globally and geopolitically. We love you so much, and we will see you soon again. I'm your host, Alan Saki, and you can find cool stuff like this. Who will teach robots ethics? Sure, simulationseries.com. You guys know where to find it. And keep uh, making cool things like this and thought-provoking uh, conversations around the world. We love you so much, and we'll talk to you soon.